Hello everyone, today we're going to be looking at glassware safety and before we do this we should probably know what types of glassware we're going to be dealing with. Let's start with this one called an Erlenmeyer flask. You can see it has this very distinctive shape where it starts off almost like a cylinder and spreads out along the bottom. This is used anytime you need to mix or stir a liquid. You can put it in the bottom of this. Notice how it's very easy to grab the top and swirl it with the very small top, it's not going to spill out as easily if you swirl this. So this is primarily used for mixing things. This one is called a beaker. This is just a typical, it almost looks like a glass that you would drink out of. Don't drink out of these ever. But it looks almost like a glass you drink out of and it has this nice piece where you can pour a liquid out of there. Beakers are very, very handy. We'll use them for all kinds of stuff. Notice that this is not as good as the Erlenmeyer flask for mixing something because there's a big area at the top where it could spill out. Finally, we have a test tube, which is used to contain small amounts of something if you need to very clearly see what's going on. More on these later. It's very, very important to remember that glassware is made of glass and can potentially break. And in fact, I'll go ahead and say that somebody, sometime during lab, is definitely going to break a piece of glassware. This is okay, as long as you didn't break it because you were horse playing or juggling with the glassware or generally doing something you shouldn't have. If you're doing a lab and you just happen to drop a piece of glassware and it breaks, it's not a big deal. Here are the steps you need to take. First, as soon as any glassware breaks, notify everybody around you and immediately get out of the area. So don't try and clean it up yourself. We don't want you to get cut. We don't want you to be contaminated with whatever chemicals might be in there. So again, as soon as glassware breaks, notify everybody in the area and clear out the area. Now, if you were in a lab as a scientist, you wouldn't have to clean this up yourself, but there are perks to being a student in school. If you break something, simply notify me. I will come clean it up and let you know what else needs done. If I get cut, it's not nearly as big a deal as if you get cut. So let me handle all the broken glassware. A big concern with glassware is that once you heat a liquid in a glass container, that glass container looks just like it did when it was cool. There's no way to tell just by looking if a glass container is going to be hot or cold. You're now looking at two glass containers filled with liquid. Tell me which one is hot and which one's cold. Well, there's no way to tell without adding thermometers. So let's add them and see what we can find. Notice the one over to the right, if I zoom in on this thermometer, you can see that this is very, very warm. If we were to grab that piece of glassware, it would not be good news for us. That is sitting at just over 180 degrees. Now that the thermometer is in there, you might actually still be able to see steam coming off the top. The whole point of this is when you heat glassware, be extremely careful. Even if it doesn't look hot, assume that it is. If you were to go to handle these, knowing that one of them had been heated, well, with a thermometer it's easy to tell. But if there's any concern that it might be warm, don't grab it with your hands. Use another object to move it. Knowing that hot glass looks exactly like cold glass, we need to know how to be able to handle these without hurting ourselves. If you are concerned that the glassware you're about to handle may be hot, use a pair of tongs to grab it. Notice that for beakers and for Erlenmeyer flasks, this is quite nice. The tongs fit neatly around the bottom, and it's very, very easy to pick them up. In fact, these tongs are designed to do just that. You'll notice with a test tube, that's a trickier proposition. So instead of using tongs to grab a test tube, we use what's called a test tube clamp, which looks like that right there. 
The way this works is that you squeeze the sides of the clamp and you'll have to squeeze pretty hard and it opens and you can just wrap that around the body of the test tube. It will clamp tight and now you have the test tube gripped very nicely. You'll notice that a test tube won't sit up by itself. We need specialized equipment just to help a test tube stand. So we have a piece of equipment we call a test tube rack. These are what most of our test tube racks look like. Notice that at the top you have this area with holes in it. The test tube will sit right down in that hole. and then will stand on its own so that you don't have to keep holding it. You'll also notice these pegs on the front of the test tube stand. What these are for is when you are done with the test tube and you need to let it dry after you've cleaned it, you can turn the test tube upside down and allow it to dry.